For today, I hope you had a safe Memorial Day. As with so many things, this year was certainly different, but I know that many Wisconsinites were able to find ways to safely enjoy the long weekend. There were socially distant cookouts with just a few close friends and family, bike rides and picnics, and even some fireworks. The weather was ideal for visiting our state parks. I'm told that a number of folks were able to do just that. More importantly, I hope that everyone had a chance to reflect on the reason we commemorate Memorial Day each year, to recognize and honor the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedoms and pay our respect to the families and loved ones they've left behind. As we continue to navigate these incredibly difficult times, I hope we can all remind ourselves from time to time that we should strive to be worthy of their sacrifice. Everyone can play a part in keeping our communities safe and helping our friends, neighbors, and loved ones stay healthy because we are all in this together. One of the most important things you can do to help others is to wear a mask or other face covering in public. Wearing a mask should be a political statement. It isn't controversial, and it's not hard to do. Masks can sometimes get a little warm and or feel a bit awkward, but wearing one in public is a simple and necessary commitment to the common good we should all be willing to make. Most of us are still staying home as much as possible. We don't need to wear a mask at home or in our small groups of people who are practicing social distancing. For example, I don't wear a mask during these media briefings because I'm with the same small group of people each time. We're all practicing social distancing and staying home. And I want to make sure that all Wisconsinites are able to understand the updates I'm delivering. But I wear a mask on my way in and out of the Capitol and any other time I'm out in public. There are so many people who don't have the luxury of taking a mask off throughout their workday or choosing when or how to wear one at all. Our healthcare workers, including my daughter, wear a mask in PPP for 12 plus hour shifts. Those who care for our loved ones in nursing homes and our first responders, not to mention the workers who interact with the public day in and day out, keeping our grocery stores stocked, operating our transit systems, caring for our kids and more. We need these folks to stay safe and healthy to keep our communities going. And they need us to help them stay safe by limiting spread of the disease. So let's all do our part to help on those front lines. When it comes to front lines of responding to COVID-19, our local governments are really stepping up. That's why today we launched the Roots to Recovery Local Government AIDS Program, a $200 million effort aimed at helping local leaders address some of their most urgent and unique COVID-19 recovery needs. The effort is funded by $200 million in care funding and will be administered by the Department of Administration. Of the $200 million, $10 million will be allocated to Wisconsin's tribal nations, with the remaining funds being distributed to every Wisconsin county, city, village, and town. Although some Wisconsin local governments have already received direct payments from the federal government, we want to ensure that every community and local partner has the resources they need to combat COVID-19 and keep the people of Wisconsin safe. The Route to Recovery grants will provide financial flexibility to local communities because they know what's best or what they, they, they know what they need and how best to address the unique recovery needs of their friends, families, and neighbors. Some of the eligible costs for local governments include emergency operation activities, purchases of personal protective equipment, cleaning, sanitizing supplies and services, including those related to elections and to elections administration. Temporary isolation housing for infected or at-risk individuals and testing and contact tracing costs above those covered by state programs. It also covers paid administrative leave for frontline public health and public safety workers who are exposed to COVID-19 and are required to isolate while they're awaiting test results or if they get a positive test result. This paid leave is very important as these workers are putting themselves on the line to keep us all safe 
and they shouldn't lose a paycheck if they have to quarantine after being exposed while working to keep us and our communities safe. Our Roots to Recovery grants are in addition to the $1 billion in resources previously announced that will fund the state's response to COVID-19, including the distribution of free testing supplies, PPE, contact tracing, community testing sites, and other valuable resources for communities across the state. These increased investments in our local governments from the CARES Act will support important work, however, more federal help is needed for both state and local partners. I will continue to advocate for additional fed federal investment in relief and stabilization funds for our state and local governments, and will continue to work with local partners and communities so that we can use federal funding to best support local governments across our state. Today, I would also like to take a moment to, to recognize Mental Health Awareness Month. This has been observed during the month of May in the United States since 1949, but the importance of this designation has certainly taken, taken on additional significance amid the COVID-19 crisis. We know the pandemic is impacting the mental health of people around the globe, as well as right here in Wisconsin, bringing about new anxieties and depression or exacerbating known mental health challenges that people face. This is not limited to adults either. The parents of children need to know about the resources that are available to them. Wisconsin, we are fortunate to have many excellent resources available to us. One that I'd like to highlight today is a new offering by, the, by Children's Wisconsin that has been enabled by the foundation of a good corporate citizen, United Health Group. The United Health Foundation's three-year 2.5 grant to Children's Wisconsin is aimed at addressing a growing number of children who need immediate support amidst a mental health crisis. In the coming months, Children's will expand its offerings with a 24-7 mental health crisis response team that can provide immediate assessment and referral while improving the patient and family experience. We are grateful for an outstanding health infrastructure that includes mental and behavioral health here in Wisconsin. It helps to safeguard and improve the emotional health and well-being of our citizens. We thank Children's Wisconsin and the United Health Foundation for continued innovations in health care so that the right services are available at the right time for those who need them. Don't hesitate to discuss concerns with your child's primary care doctor, another health, prof another health profession, or a trusted resource in the community. Find a local mental health treatment provider. Text HOPELINE to 741-741 for support. And now before Secretary-Designee Andrea Palm gives her daily update, I'd like, to hear, I'd like you to hear from one of the healthcare workers on the front lines, Dr. Aronica Williams, Chief Medical Officer for Milwaukee Health Services, Inc. Aronica, take it away. Thank you, Governor Evers, for this opportunity. I understand that the purpose of these highlights of clinical staff around the state is to help bring the COVID-19 experience to life. Our organization started talking about COVID-19 in January 2020. As a chief medical officer, it is my duty to highlight health topics and public health concerns that are emerging across the globe to ensure that our providers stay well informed, especially so that we know how to educate and advise our patients. At that time in January, COVID-19 was touted as being just like the flu. However, this virus has proven itself to be vastly different than many that we've seen in the past. Like many other health providers, I was glued to the computer reviewing CDC and WHO updates and COVID dashboards and immersed in conference calls with other like entities trying to get a handle on what our collective response to this larger than life virus would be. At first, testing was so limited and PPE was so scarce, we felt very ill-equipped with the existing resources. It was a very humbling time. As the weeks and months passed, our clinic, along with the other Milwaukee area federally qualified health centers, were commissioned to become testing sites. Testing supplies and PPE resources became more available through various partnerships 
And we were glad to contribute and serve Milwaukee's most vulnerable populations through this effort. To date, we have performed several hundred tests for symptomatic patients, and we are still testing every day. Nationally, we learned about the virus, its spread, and how to decrease the risk of acquiring it. We had more information in our armamentarium to help us further educate and inform patients. We were constantly updating our processes and procedures to match the ever-changing guidance from regulatory bodies. As such, our clinic's leadership had to make the tough decision to curtail operations, relegating clinic visits to patients who absolutely needed to be seen in the office and canceling preventive visits such as physicals, pap smears, mammograms, and routine dental visits. And although we have developed our telehealth process during this time to offer patients the ability to still connect with their provider while remaining safe in their home, the overall reduction in services financially has impacted our clinic. But we realize that that financial impact is not unique to our clinic. Several businesses in our state have been hit hard. It's been a challenging time for us all. As a primary care provider, I talk a lot about prevention with my patients. We are all familiar with the axiom, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I couldn't agree more with COVID-19. After the weeks and months of research and testing, the best remedy for COVID-19 still continues to be social distancing, wearing masks, washing and cleansing our hands frequently, and sanitizing commonly used surfaces. COVID-19 has proven itself to be no respecter of persons. We have seen both the rich and the poor affected. We have seen people in all age groups affected, and we have seen so many succumb to it despite race and gender. It has literally taken life from us right before our very eyes. And because no cure exists yet, we must not become careless in our activities and our social engagement. I absolutely understand that businesses have to start opening back up. Countless business owners and leaders are looking at how to do just that and open their businesses in the safest way possible. As a doctor, my mission is to protect my patients in all that I do. As a chief medical officer, I make it my mission to protect my staff in all that I do. I cannot fulfill either of those missions if our community as a whole is so quick to resume the normal that we once knew and forfeit the public health gains that we have seen when safer at home orders were in place. This battle with COVID-19 is far from over. And although healthcare providers have seen some improvement in testing and supplies, we are definitely not where we need to be as far as resources are concerned. As I mentioned, this journey has been humbling and challenging but we know what to do. There is talk of a second wave in the fall, but we have to remember that our decisions today will impact what we will be allowed to do tomorrow. I do not want us to go backwards and see a rise in cases in our state. Each of us has a responsibility to ensure the improvement in our community. And I'm asking each of us to do our part. Again, Governor Evers, I am extremely grateful for this opportunity to share just a small aspect of my journey. I will now turn over the discussion to Secretary Designee Palm. Thank you, Dr. Williams, uh, for your dedication to your patients, to your staff, and to your community, and for sharing your story today. Today, I wanna talk about testing. Testing is fundamental to our ability to box in this virus, and we've made great strides here in Wisconsin. In fact, our lab capacity is one of our success stories. Working with partners across the state, we have taken our lab capacity from zero to well over 14,000 tests a day in two months. And that is important to know because that means that everyone in Wisconsin who needs a test can get a test. We want to make sure that everyone in Wisconsin hears this message, which is why we are announcing a new public service campaign today. You will hear us on the radio and see us on TV with a simple message. If you need a test, get a test. If you have any symptoms of COVID-19, or if you have been exposed, please call your healthcare provider. And to find out if there is a community testing site in your area, 
visit our website at dhs.wisconsin.gov backslash testing. I've shared the symptoms of COVID-19 with you before, but I want to emphasize that even if you are experiencing just one of these symptoms, or even if your symptoms are mild, you should still get a test. The symptoms to watch for are a fever of over 100.4 degrees, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, a sore throat, headache, chills, muscle aches, and a new loss of taste or smell. Let me underscore this, because I want you to know why testing is so important to you and to your community. The reason we test is to find out vital information. On an individual level, your test result helps you know whether you need to isolate yourself from members of your household and what kind of changes in symptoms to look for. At a community level, Testing and contact tracing tells us where to look for more infections, and that tells us where to send needed resources to help stop the spread. So here's where things stand today. We have 210,605 negative tests, which is an increase of 9,731 over yesterday. There are now 16,462 confirmed cases of COVID-19 here in Wisconsin, which is an increase of 599 cases over yesterday. Our total deaths have reached 539. Testing and tracing, these are integral steps to our public health response to COVID-19. And we can only take these steps as partners DHS cannot test and trace alone. We need your help. So please, if you need a test, get a test. Remember to stay at home while you wait for your results. And please, answer the phone if a contact tracer calls you. Wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds and continue practicing physical distancing. We will get through this together. Thank you for your ongoing partnership.